Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be dissecting one of Bokao's best moments in the ring. He gets control of his opponent and just unleashes a vicious stream of knees, the final one landing right to the neck. But there are so many subtleties in this little couple second clip that we need to go in and break down. Today's episode is brought to you by Bioptimizers. We are focusing on the magnesium breakthrough, which has made a massive difference in my sleep and my recovery so that when I wake up in the morning, I'm going, okay, I am ready to put in hard work for my upcoming training camp. Something that I was not aware of before I started taking magnesium is that 75% of the American population are deficient in this mineral. And guess what? I was one of those people. How can you tell? You have muscle cramping or muscle twitching. So often I would be sitting there and my hamstring or my calf or a bicep would just lock up. Never happens anymore now that I've started taking my magnesium. Plus, it helps me get to sleep that much faster. Better rest equals better performance the next day. I know this to be true because I have struggled with sleep many times, waking up somewhere between five and 10 times per night, sometimes not able to fall back to sleep for a half an hour. You wake up the next day, you try to perform in your training, and you just feel like a zombie. Be sure not to miss out on your chance for the best sleep ever and fantastic recovery. You can head over to bioptimizers forward slash Gabriel and use my promo code Gabriel10 to save 10%. And if you subscribe, not only will you get amazing discounts and free gifts, you will make sure that your monthly supply is guaranteed. So if you just breeze through this clip of Bokao throwing knees, probably all you're gonna see is one, two, skip off and knee to the head, but there is so much more that happens here. So let's analyze this, let's do a breakdown. Let's see what his arms are doing, see what his legs are doing to create the power and the space he needs. Let's see how he enters into the clench. There's just so much to cover. So starting off, we see Bokao walk forward, he throws a jab, he throws a jab, and he goes to a long guard. The long guard right away gives him protection for a safe entry directly in. And what happens is Kohi throws the big right hand, or the overhand, and it just ricochets off the forearm. And then from there, Bokao is able to grab the head. But Kohi doesn't only throw the one punch, he comes from one to two. And what Bokao is able to do from this long guard is stifle the first shot, and then with his forearm, catch the second shot. When you catch somebody's hook here, you now control the inside of their arm and it makes it very difficult for them to get any momentum off that arm after. So we see him jab, jab, long guard, block the first shot, get the second shot. He's already now controlled the back of Kohi's head and he's able to yank him down and pull him out of position. And as you guys know from clench work, if you can yank your partner down and especially make them step, they're gonna be at a weakened point. And Bokao has done such a good job already, just on a simple entry, by controlling the head and the arm simultaneously and moving Kohi's feet. Now once Bokao has that clench position, Kohi goes to close the space by pushing his hips really far forward. And that's something that you wanna do in clench work. When there's no takedowns threatened in the MMA style, the wrestling takedowns, you're best off having your hips close to your opponent's hips because it removes the danger of the knee. You kill that space in between. But Bokao sees that, he takes a step back to create the space and slams in the first body knee. Once the first knee lands, we have to look at foot placement because he wants to follow up with another one, but had he thrown the first knee and come down to parallel, he would have been jammed and had to take an extra second. But he turns his opponent, he lands the first one, drops backwards into a southpaw stance so that now he can slam off the second knee. So Kohi takes two direct knees down to body level and just has no answer. Starts trying to protect his body with his forearms, which yes, I suppose is a good idea in this threatened position, but it exposes him 
to so much more danger. Now from this position, Bokal recognizes that the space is getting a little bit crushed and Kohi is now vulnerable in a new area. But what I really like is what he does with his right hand. With his left hand, he's still controlling the head, but the right hand is still against that bicep. And as Kohi goes to pull backwards, Bokal follows, keeping that pressure against it. If he was to keep his hand right where it was, and Kohi could pull back, he would be able to then come in with an attack. But it's a no-go because Bokao continues to control that bicep. And then from there, we see him do that big skip-off technique, which we often do on bag work or maybe in clench work. But instead of coming into the body, as very often we do, he swings the leg way back and slams it up to head level. And because of Kohi's angle, instead of it coming into the side of the head, it comes right into the upper chest or lower throat region. And Bokao's opponent is actually tall. He's a very tall fighter. He has, I think, about two or three inches on Bokao. So we see him actually skip out and then launch himself up in the air to close that height difference so that he can actually get above that waist level, above chest level, even going up higher towards those areas which are very dangerous. Like any knee to the head is just gonna be so traumatic. There's no protection. It's just bone on bone and it always ends up rocking you. Putting it into the throat must be even worse. I've never been knee in the throat that much less, I guess, even kicked in the throat or punched in the throat that I can think of. But having a shot like that come right in there would be so, I think, devastating. Devastating is the only word. So when you guys are playing around with these little side skip things, you could get that little jump as Bokao does in this amazing combo of these knees. As we move on in this fight, there's one other quick clip I want to show you. Bokao taking control of Kohi's head, doing a little skip of the feet, recognizing, oh, my moment's not there. Like, I can't actually land the knee right now. So he takes a couple little skips, finds the moment to drag Kohi down low, and then again, execute the knee to the head. This one, in my mind, is not as amazing. It's not, oh my gosh, we have to analyze this, but it's still cool to see. Taking that extra little pause, shuffling the feet, waiting for the moment, not rushing it, and just getting a great finish to an already amazing fight for Bokao. One of the hardest things about learning the clench and being able to execute these type of sequences that we see Bokao do, is there's so much small stuff happening on the inside that to the average person is not gonna be as clear as somebody just stepping in and throwing boxing combos. When there's more space, it's easier to see, it's easier to analyze, and you can very often go, oh, that's what happened, and I'll go train that. But when we start getting to these in tight zones, if you have not had good experience in the clench or lots of experience, you haven't had the opportunity to train along somebody in Thailand, it's hard to break these little moments down. So I hope everything I gave you today helps you on that path to understanding, oh, this is what happened, and look at those tiny little details and why they are so important. Guys, thanks for joining me today. As always, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.